In 1766, a man of impeccable reputation and no little foresight signed a 99-year lease with the Earl of Grosvenor for a rather desolate strip of land on an upcoming area of London known as the Five Fields. That man was Richard Tattersall, and his story started here, in what is known today as Hyde Park Corner, exactly 250 years ago. He started by selling hounds and hunting horses in the 18th century, but he soon progressed to selling thoroughbreds. Richard Tattersall was a man of integrity, well connected in London society. He ran his affairs with equal regard to both buyer and seller. He was often heard to say, better to lose commission than lose a friend. From those humble origins would flourish an auction house of global repute. It has sold countless champion thoroughbreds and thrives to the extent that it now turns over more than a quarter of a billion guineas every year. As time passed, Richard Tattersall's business flourished. In order to commemorate its origins, he commissioned a water fountain, featuring a fox framed inside a stone cupola, and on top, a bust of George IV, himself a regular patron of Tattersall's as Prince of Wales. This iconic structure stood at the sales grounds in London. When Tattersall's relocated here to Park Paddocks in Newmarket, so too did the famous Fox. Although business was brisk, Richard Tattersall made a separate fortune by his purchase of an unbeaten racehorse. In 1779, he bought Highflyer for the princely sum of 2,500 pounds. Highflyer would become the leading sire in Britain and Ireland 12 times. Tattersall was thus a wealthy man when he died in 1795, by which time the auction house was trading as Tattersall and Son. Come the dawn of the 19th century, and Tattersall's reputation for fairness and integrity was well established. The firm was also expanding. An auction was inaugurated outside the Salutation Inn at Doncaster in 1838. Three decades later, Tattersall's relocated to nearby Knightsbridge Green, where lavish premises were constructed. The new setting was every bit the social hub of old. It was akin to a club for gentlemen of status. A regular was Lord Brampton, who held the office of counsel to the jockey club. In his autobiography, Lord Brampton wrote, Tattersall's, in my time, was one of the pleasantest Sunday afternoon lounges in London. The institution has perhaps known more great men than Parliament itself, not so many bishops, perhaps, as the church, but more statesmen than could get into the House of Lords. Here, the great met with the small, the wit met with the fool, the rich met with the poor. Tattersall's also conducted private auctions on behalf of Britain's premier breeders, not least at Hampton Court, site of the royal studs. In the early 1900s, Tattersall's principal yearling sale was staged at Doncaster. There were notable highlights as the firm cemented its reputation for selling superior bloodstock. In 1922, Mumtaz Mahal, then a yearling, was bought by the Aga Khan for 9,200 guineas. Dubbed the Flying Filly for her electric pace, Mumtaz Mahal became profoundly influential at stud. There were other highlights. Seya Jireo, sold for the record price of 28,000 guineas in 1945, went on to win the St. Ledger. And Tattersall's primacy was reinforced spectacularly in 1949. In that year, all five British classics were won by horses sold by the firm. Nimbus, 2,000 guineas, and Derby. Musidora, 1,000 guineas, and Oaks. Ridgewood, the St. Ledger. By this time, Park Paddocks in Newmarket was becoming increasingly central to operations. The aggregate take of the December sales, inaugurated back in 1886, reached one million guineas for the first time in 1954. Six years later, it would exceed three million guineas. Development continued apace. In 1958, Tassasol's premier yearling sale was moved from Doncaster to Park Paddocks, which was being extensively renovated. 
Central to the raft of improvements was the auction ring, the focal point of the whole complex. An imposing octagonal structure, it is capped by a gold-plated wind vane depicting Pegasus, the flying horse. The auction ring had to reflect the quality of the bloodstock passing through it. It was completed in 1965, just in time for a vaguely noble occasion. Vaguely Noble was a tantalising prospect when he came up for auction as a two-year-old at the Tattersall's December sales in 1967. He'd won the Observer Gold Cup, a signature juvenile contest, by seven lengths. He was offered for sale by the estate of Major Lionel Holliday, who bred the colt. Every seat in the ring was occupied two hours before Vaguely Noble came before the auctioneer. Precisely two minutes and twelve seconds later, Vaguely Noble had redrafted the record books. At 136,000 guineas, he'd shattered the previous best price of 47,000 guineas, established by 10-year-old stallion Solario back in 1932. At prevailing exchange rates, the sum paid for Vaguely Noble eclipsed the highest price ever paid for a thoroughbred anywhere in the world. It was money well spent. Racing for Wilma Franklin and Nelson Bunker Hunt, Vaguely Noble would achieve iconic status when he waltzed away with the 1968 Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe by three lengths from the Derby winner, Sir Ivor. As Tattersall's continued to thrive, it broadened its horizons. In 1979, it bought a significant minority stake in the Irish auctioneer's Ballsbridge International Bloodstock Sales, ahead of bringing it into the fold as Tattersall's Ireland. More recently, Tattersall's extended its reach into mainland Europe and beyond. In 2008, it acquired a 20% stake in leading Australian bloodstock auctioneers, William Inglis and Son. In 2014, the firm bought a majority stake in the fledgling French sales company, Osaris. One year later, it took over Brightwell's bloodstock sales, now run under the Tattersall's Ireland banner at Ascot and Cheltenham. It wasn't just the company profile that assumed a new definition. On his death in 1942, Somerville Tattersall was the last family member to run the firm. New partners bought into the business, among them Ken Watt, whose vision provided the impetus for the development of Park Paddocks into a world-class sales ground. By 1982, when Watt was succeeded as chairman by his cousin Michael, Tattersall's was well placed to capitalize on the imminent bloodstock boom. Records continued to tumble until the end of the century, by which time Edmund Marnie had succeeded Michael Watt as chairman in 1993. The new millennium opened with a flourish. It saw a Sadler's Wells colt out of Dorara sell for 3.4 million guineas, a new European benchmark for a yearling. Large mark sell offering, ladies and gentlemen, Galileo full system to one. Remarkably, that sum would be overtaken in 2013 when a filly by Galileo out of a luring park entered the sales ring. Bidding vaulted all the way up to five million guineas, a new world record for a yearling filly. Together with its clients, Tattersall's reaped rich harvests by adhering to ethics decreed by its founder. Integrity is the measure of any auction house, and sales returns spoke for themselves. 2006 was a seminal year, when Magical Romance changed hands for 4.6 million guineas. She set another world record, this time for a broodmare. Set four million six. Magical Romance was sold on day two of the December breeding stock sales. She helped propel total receipts to just short of 30 million guineas, the highest amount ever taken on a single day of trading at a European bloodstock sale. Such handsome returns were the springboard for Tattersall's to generate annual turnover in excess of 200 million guineas for the first time. Six years later, come 2014, annual turnover had swelled to 263 million. The sale of thoroughbred jewels always makes compelling theater. A hush descends over the atmospheric auction ring at Park Paddocks as rival bidders take their place. There is electricity in the air, 
This is the beautiful Dancing Rain, a chestnut... As there was in 2013, when Dancing Rain became the first Oaks winner carrying her first foal to be offered for sale in more than half a century, sparks would fly. At three minutes six, this is the bit now, at three minutes six. Dancing Rain sold all the while. In the end, the gavel crashed at four million guineas. At four million guineas, all done and sold at four million. It was a day of days. Later, under the bright lights, that price was eclipsed when Immortal Verse came before the auctioneer. Another night of theater, another world record price established for a brood mare. This time, at 4.7 million guineas. These were heady times. One year on, and it was just the judge's turn to make a splash. At 4.5 million guineas, no filly was ever more expensively acquired in a British auction ring. The price paid for just the judge was the going rate for classic winners. In her case, the Irish 1,000 guineas. Yet one particular classic surpasses all others the one that unfolds over the rolling Epsom Downs. The Derby, a race for regal thoroughbreds. It is the annual benchmark of excellence. The quest to win it is all-consuming, which is why affluent owners always gather at park paddocks for the yearling sales. They know that Tattersall's is the unrivaled source. In the first 13 years of the new millennium, no less than six Derby winners were sold here. From its origins at Hyde Park Corner, Tattersall's has scripted some of the turf's defining moments. There have been tumultuous peaks. Records have tumbled for 250 years. It is testament to the way Tattersall's has served a bloodstock industry that remains as bewitching as ever. It's fair to say, were Richard Tattersall to ride around park paddocks today, he would be proud of his legacy. Who's to know what the next 250 years will bring?